The East Prussian city of Elbing, now Elblon, located in Poland, once had the most beautiful inner city centers. But then, January 1945, the Red Army poured in and they destroyed it. Houses were burned, civilians were shot, and women assaulted. But why? Why were the Soviets so cruel during their invasion of East Prussia? Stay tuned! Here in Elblon, formerly known as Elbing, a town in East Prussia that did not survive the Second World War. It was largely destroyed, its inhabitants expelled and the city became part of Poland and is now known by the name of El Blanc. To understand the Soviet cruelty we need to go back to June 1941 when Nazi Germany invaded the Soviet Union. Operation Barbarossa kicked off and Adolf Hitler said that this would be a war of annihilation against the Slavic, Asiatic, Judeo Bolsheviks. As German general Erich Hooper wrote seven weeks before the attack, it is an ancient struggle of the German people against the Slavs, the defense of the European culture against the Russian Asiatic flood, the repulsion of Jewish Bolshevism. In concept and execution, each fighting engagement must be guided by an iron will to annihilate the enemy totally and without pity. According to German Field Marshal Walter von Reichenau, the Germans had two tasks, the utter destruction of the Bolshevist state and the extermination of anything foreign that could be a threat for the Wehrmacht. And so it, this war was carried out. The fact alone that more than half of the estimated 5.7 million Red Army soldiers died in captivity says it all. Because of the acute lack of food, medical care and clothing resulted in a horrific death toll. Furthermore. Soviet resistance activities, the partisans were put down mercilessly. Often whole villages were set ablaze and its inhabitants murdered, simply because a partisan activity had occurred nearby. Jews were murdered en masse by the Einsatzgruppe. These units operated behind the front and carried out mass executions of the Jewish population of Ukraine, Belarus, the Baltic States and Russia. As the Germans retreated from these areas in 1943-44, they pursued a scorched earth policy where food, livestock, machinery, houses were taken away or destroyed. This sowed the seeds for Soviet revenge in 44-45. Soviet atrocities began as soon as they set foot on German soil in October 1944, the Soviets captured a village called Nemesdorf. Its inhabitants suffered a terrible ordeal. When the Germans retook the village, they found 20 of its inhabitants murdered and the village was burned down. As the Soviets overrun East Prussia from January 1945, German civilians were randomly shot and countless of German girls and women were assaulted, sometimes by dozens of soldiers in front of horrified family members. As Russian writer Alexander Solzhenitsyn wrote in his poem named Prussian Knights. The little daughters on the mattress, dead. How many have been on it? A platoon, a company perhaps. A girl's been turned into a woman. A woman turned into a corpse. It's all come down to simple phrases. Do not forget, do not forgive. Blood for blood, a tooth for a tooth. Немок. И вот мой взвод собственный, все мои солдаты бросаются и насилуют немок. Когда на спасение дети, матерей пытаются спасти, их застреливают, их расстреливают детей. Значит, теперь на дороге стоят генералы, наблюдают это, полковники. Ну, временные, дальше ехать нельзя, была загромождена дорога, вышли, и с, э, телефонистки мои все смеются. German civilians that didn't manage to get away and were caught by the Red Army were simply shot on the spot. Men, women, the elderly, children, whole towns and settlements were set ablaze. So how do we explain these Soviet brutalities in East Prussia? It can be summed up with one word, revenge. Most of the Red Army soldiers had at least one of their family members killed in the war during the German invasion of the Soviet Union. Those who had families that lived under German rule sometimes had their entire families wiped out. And as the Germans retreated and the Soviets retook Ukraine, they found the massive death and destruction the Germans had left behind. As Soviet Jewish author Vasily Grossman wrote, 
Every soldier, every officer, and every general of the Red Army who had seen the Ukraine in blood and fire, who had heard the true story of what had been happening in the Ukraine during the two years of German rule, understands to the bottom of their souls that there are only two sacred words left to us. One of them is love, and the other one is revenge. And this shock was strengthened when the Soviet troops discovered the mass graves of the executed Jews and when they liberated the concentration camps like Majinek and Treblinka. The hatred against the Germans was also fueled by writers such as Ilya Ehrenberg, who wrote, just like Grossman, for the Soviet propaganda newspaper Red Star. He became immensely popular and often when the newspaper was distributed among Red Army soldiers, his articles were read first. If a soldier wasn't able to read, he asked his officer to read it out loud. Ilya Ehrenberg often aped Nazi language and twisted the words around the theme of kill all the Germans. Furthermore, as Red Army soldiers entered Germany via East Prussia, they were amazed by the luxurious lifestyles these people enjoyed. Their clean, well-ordered towns with paved streets and electricity, well-constructed houses filled with furniture, bedding provided with indoor toilets and running water. And after all the misery these Red Army soldiers had been through, losing their relatives, losing millions of their comrades in battle, facing the hard life at the front, they now ask themselves, why did the Germans, who had so much, attack us, who had so little? If you want to know more about Germany's territorial evolution, you can click right here. Thank you so much for watching. Do not forget to subscribe. And cheers from Elblanc, Poland.